Hi Booktube, Lynette here and welcome to another video uh, on a rather frantic Sunday afternoon but that's another story for another day. Uh, today's video is going to be the books that I might read in the month of April. I have quite an extensive list this month um, because I'm taking part in a readathon. Uh, but I'll talk about that in a bit. Um, I do have some books that I absolutely really do want to get to um, this month. As always, there are my two book club picks. Those two book clubs are the Cozy Book Co and the Literature Club. So the first book club choice is uh, for the Cozy Book Co. And this month we are reading, and there are two titles depending on where you live. So if you're in the US, um, it's my grandmother uh, asked me to tell you she's sorry and if you're in the UK it's my grandmother apologises and sends her regards. This is by Frederick Backman. Uh, as a book club we have read Frederick Backman before, we read Beartown a few years ago. It's a series that I've intended to continue but haven't got to because it is a series. I did like the first book. Um, and yeah, I, I want to read more by him, but I haven't picked anything up yet. So I'm quite pleased that we're picking this one up. Don't really know what this one is about. Um, so I'm just going to read to you what the blurb says on Amazon. Trusty Kindle. Uh, so it says, everyone remembers the smell of their grandmother's house. Everyone remembers the stories their grandmother told them. But does everyone remember their grandmother flirting with policemen or driving illegally? Breaking into a zoo in the middle of the night? Firing a paintball gun from a balcony in her dressing gown. Seven-year-old Elsa does. Some might call Elsa's granny eccentric or even crazy. Elsa calls her a superhero. And granny's stories of knights and princesses and dragons and castles are her superpower. Because, as Elsa is starting to learn, heroes and villains don't always exist in imaginary kingdoms. They could live just down the hallway. As Christmas draws near, even the best superhero grandmothers may have one or two things they'd like to apologise for, and in the process, Elsa can have some breathtaking adventures of her own. So I don't think that really gives very much away, um, other than this grandmother sounds like she's a lot of fun, and I probably will want to know her by the end of the book and wish that um, she was a real person that I could meet in real life. Uh, so that does sound really interesting. It's... Um, I'm sure it's going to be emotional. I've heard that he's quite an emotional writer and certainly uh, reading Beartown, he did make me feel all the feels. So yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to picking that one up and hoping that this one, as you will find out um, from my uh, March update, um, I'm hoping that it will be a better pick for April than March's pick was. And the Clitchester Club pick for the month of April is The Intimacy Experiment by Rosie Dunan. And again, I don't really know very much about it, so I'm going to read the blurb from my uh, trusty Kindle. Uh, so it says, Naomi and Ethan will test the boundaries of love in this provocative romance from the author of the groundbreaking debut, The Roommate. I've not heard of Rosie Dunan before, so she's going to be a new to me author. Um, love isn't a perfect science. Naomi Grant has built a life go around going against the grain. When the sex positive startup she co-founded becomes an international sensation, her responsibilities shift from the bedroom to the boardroom. Ready to conquer new worlds, Naomi wants to extend her platform to live lecturing, but higher education won't hire her. Ethan Cohen has recently received two honours. LA Mag named him one of the city's hottest bachelors and he became rabbi of his own synagogue. Unfortunately, his shul is low on both funds and congregants, so the board gives him three months to turn things around or they'll close the doors for good. Together, Naomi and Ethan host a buzzy seminar series on modern intimacy, the perfect solution to their problems. Until they discover a new one, their growing attraction to each other. They've built the syllabus for love's latest experiment, but neither of them expected that they'd be the ones putting it to the test. So sounds right up my street um kind of workplace uh colleagues to lovers um it sounds like there's uh, plenty of room for lots of misunderstandings um and some fun and some humor uh so i'm really looking forward to that and um i love romance anyway so it's probably going to be a fairly quick and easy read for me 
The third book I want to read this month is a book that I've had on pre-order since way before Christmas, before the book buying ban uh, came into effect. So um, it's a hardback book. It is a new one. You can't quite see them here. Um, you might be able to see them just there, or just behind the home sign. Um, it is Atalanta by Jennifer Saint. This is the third book by Jennifer Saint and the third retelling of Greek myth. I adored Ariadne and um, Electra. They just were so accessible to me. Um, and I just felt that, again, twisting myth on its head because it's telling it from the female perspective and what the females and the women of that time might have been thinking rather than the male perspectives that are widely known and written. Um, so Atlanta is going to be yet another one that is probably going to be very accessible um, and great to see it from another female perspective. I have never heard of Atalanta in Greek mythology, so this is going to be a completely new story to me. So again, I have no idea about the, the myth of Atalanta, so I'm going to read to you the blurb from Amazon. When a daughter is born to the king of Arcadia, she brings only disappointment. Left exposed on a mountainside, the defenceless infant Atalanta is left to the mercy of a passing mother bear and raised alongside the cubs under the protective eye of the goddess Artemis. Swearing that she will prove her worth alongside the famed heroes of Greece, Atalanta leaves her forest to join Jason's band of Argonauts. But can she carve out her own place in the legends in a world made for men? I had no idea that there was a female Argonaut. I've I've seen Jason and the Argonauts, the, you know, the, the old films, and I've heard about the Argonauts, but that's the first time I've ever heard that there was a female Argonaut. So definitely, definitely looking forward to picking up this book um, this month. It's probably going to be one that I pick up as soon as it comes out. Um, it's on pre-order. I can't remember whether I've ordered it to be delivered to my local store or whether it's going to be delivered to me at home. But definitely you can guarantee um, it's released on the 13th of April and as soon after 13th of April as I'm ready to start a new book that is going to be picked up. And the fourth and final book that I really do want to pick up in the month of April and I think um, it will probably be nearer the end of the month than the beginning of the month. Um, but that is Before They Are Hanged by Joe Abercrombie. This is book two in his first law trilogy. Uh, I have read um, the first book. You will see that. I will talk about that in my March wrap up. Uh, I am reading this for the first Law Along being run by Becca and the Books and um, some other YouTubers who are reading it along with her. She does this. She picks a big series um, to work her way through and it's um, it's a catch up basically. Uh, I ha This is the first catch up that I've taken part in. Um, the first one that she ever did was Game of Thrones. I haven't finished Game of Thrones and I don't think I ever will. Uh, the second one that she did was The Realm of the Elderlings, which I had read um, at the point that they started. I was finishing the final trilogy, so uh, I didn't take part in that um, because I wanted to, if I'd started rereading with them, I would never have got to the final trilogy until they were reading it and I wanted to read it before that I was a bit desperate to get hold of it but anyway this is grim dark fantasy um you will hear my thoughts on the first book in my March wrap-up so I'm not going to go into them here but safe to say I have the second book it wasn't a bad start to a series I can't really tell you what it's about um I'm still no clearer after reading the first book but we are following um some people so there is a little bit of magic in this world there is war in this world um i think there's going to be two wars that maybe at some stage come together I'm not 100 percent certain on that at this point but definitely really looking forward to carrying on with this one i think the live show uh where becca and others talk about this book is going to be mid-may i think she said so i definitely need to get it read during the month of April at best. And then I'm taking part in a readathon. 
The readathon that I'm taking part in is Realmathon, and this was thought up by uh, Cassidy over at Covers with Cassidy. Um, I will leave her announcement video linked down below so that if you're interested, you can go and have a look over there. Basically, she uh, has set it up that there will be four teams and each you pick the team that you want to join and then when you finish your books you fill in um, a document to tell them which book you've finished and you decide to apply prompts to it um, and those prompts will either gain points for your team or lose points for one of the other three teams. Um, it's very low key, you don't have to pick books based on the prompts um, because you can have up to five prompts for each book and you can reuse prompts you don't have to just once it's not like others where once you've read one prompt you can't reuse it you can double up so you can use it again so she has the four teams are based on different genres of books so the first team is sanctum um, and this is the realm of thrills and chills so there uh, kind of spooky and so it's thriller, horror, all those sorts of books. The second realm is Cyrus which is the realm of love so their genre theme is romance. The third is Ilma and they are the realm of tech and knowledge so science fiction and non-fiction are their genre. And then the fourth and final is Enya and they are the realm of myths, legends and beasts um and their genre was fantasy so i you can probably guess who i've gone for i have gone for cyrus yes i have gone for the romance team i was torn i could have gone for enya as well for a fantasy um but i think my mind is more romance focused right now so that's where i am and that's who i've joined so like i said there are four teams you pick your team um, if you are interested in joining, then go to um, watch Cassidy's uh, announcement video below. She's got all the links there um, for the Google Docs that you need to be able to pledge to your team and for um, downloads so that you can show a TBR so that, yeah, everything is there. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. So I've decided you don't have to read your, um, your genre. Um, I think you might get extra points if you do read your genre. So, I have all the romance this month. Now, I have some on my um, shelves and I have some on my Kindle. So, I'm just going to talk you through uh, what most of those are. So, from my shelves, I've got The Flat Chair by Beth O'Leary. This is about um, two people who are sharing a flat and they are um one works night shifts one works day shifts so they are sleeping in the same bed leaving notes for each other and through those notes they form a relationship of sorts i've had this on my shelf for a couple of years um we read the switch by beth o'leary for cozy book co a couple of years ago and i picked up the flat show after that because i did enjoy it so that's one potential Another one that might is going to get me points and might get me points for hybrid book is Kingdom of the Wicked by Kerry Maniscalco. I bought this on a whim. Now I've seen it hyped up on YouTube a lot. Um, and again, it's romance. It's a uh, fantasy romance. It's about um, Amelia, whose sister goes missing and... Um, and then is murdered and Amelia wants to seek revenge and then she meets Roth who's a prince of hell so definitely looking forward to picking this one up um I've been wanting to pick it up for a while so Realmathon is a good excuse for me to get on it the only issue I have with this is I will be starting a new series if I do it and I am trying to avoid that Another book that might get me additional points for hybrid genre is Hooked by Emily McIntyre. I knew there was a reason why I picked this up when I was in Waterstones the other week. Uh, and again, it's romance. It's um, based around a retelling of Peter Pan, only it's Captain Hook getting his happy ever after rather than Peter Pan. Um, yeah, so... 
I don't really know what it's about other than it is Wendy. And then when instead of Wendy ending up with Peter, she ends up with Captain Hook. Now, I love the TV show Once Upon a Time. I loved the character of Hook in that. Um, so there's always been potential for him to get his um, get his best. Uh, and I'm looking forward to picking it up. These were also, I think, indie um, published. So definitely want to pick it up. The only other problem with this though is again, it's going to start another series because there are at least two more books after this, potentially a fourth one due for release. Um, but yeah, it, neither was the reason why I picked this up and broke my book buying ban. The other four possibilities, I will leave a link in the cards to my unboxing video that went up on Thursday last week. So the books are uh, The Two Halves of My Heart by Rachel DeLune. Someone Like You by Alexandra Silva. A Bridge Between Us by K.K. Allen. And The Junior by Monica Murphy. All four of those books were recently delivered. Um, I got them from the Romance Readers Book Box UK. Uh, so like I said, I will leave a link to that video in the cards, which has all the links and um, tells you what all those books are about if you're interested. They are, all four of them are romance. They are contemporary romance. There's no crossover there, so I won't get any hybrid points for that. If I've got through all of those, I then thought that it would be a good idea if I work my way through uh, my Kindle Unlimited downloads. So uh, I have quite a few downloads, um, which are, they're pretty much all series continuations. So not only um, will it uh, reduce down my Kindle Unlimited list, um, it will also um, mean that I make some progress in series as well, just in case I do start you know, two series in the month of April. Um, now, I've talked about these before, but I have a sci-fi romance series by Jesse Donovan. Uh, they are the Kelder and Runic Warriors. Um, I have book number three, I think, to read, which is The Air. Um, so I definitely want to get on and read more of those. I'm intrigued with where it's been left off at the end of the second book. So definitely want to get on with that one. I have the Four Horsemen series by Laura Thalassa. Uh, so Pestilence, War, Famine and Death. Not sure if that's the right order. I know Pestilence and Death are the start and end. I can't, I'm not sure which way around Famine and War go. But I have all four of those. Um, I've heard good things about those on there. I have books four, five and six in the Bleeding Star series by A.L. Jackson. Um, this is uh, rock star romances. Uh, I've read the first three books. I want to know about the rest of the band. Um, there were some situations uh, that came out of the, the previous three books that I want to follow up on. I have uh, Jesse Donovan's Tahoe Dragon Mates series that I want to make some more progress in. So I've got those as well. Um, yeah, and then I have... Um, I have the next book in uh, the study series by Maria. I can't, can't remember the name of the series, but it's by Maria V. Schneider. The first book was Poison Study. I've got the next book, Fire Study, and I think I've got Magic Study as well. Um, so I want to get to that one too. And that one might actually, again, um, get me some hybrid genre points. So those are the many, 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 many books that may be possibilities <laughs> for the month of April. Safe to say I'm going to be reading a lot of romance um, and I'm looking forward to it. I don't do romance pre uh, so much in February. I get a bit bleh on it um, because it gets shoved down your throat with it being Valentine's month. Um, so, yeah, so I'm looking forward to catching up with romance um, because I haven't read so much of it recently. And yeah, we'll we'll see where I go from there. Um, please let me know if you are um, intrigued by Realmathon um, and if you're going to join us, if you sign up. And let me know which team you join. Um, join Cyrus. 
<laughs> you don't have to read the team genre. Um, I should have. I don't know if I pointed that out that out earlier, but you don't have to read the team genre, so don't be put off. Go and check out uh, Cassidy's video. She gives lots of information and detail. And like I say, she has got do go Google Docs, Google Docs set up to explain it all to you. So um, yeah, come and join us. Um, you don't have to be on YouTube to do it. Um, you just you just have to love reading. So yeah. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already, then subscribe to the channel. At the point that I'm filming this, I am one subscriber away from 150. I have been hovering around the 147, 148 mark for about eight, nine months. And the other day I logged on and I had 149. So I'm one away from 150 at the point that I'm filming this. So please come and join uh, this little group um, who sit and watch my videos. And I, yeah, I'm not going to confirm that I'm going to put a video up every Monday in April, but I'm going to try. So not sure when the next video will be. But I look forward to seeing you in it. Bye.